We're going to have an official moment. Of course, we're going to talk some serious shit about our industry. Uh, but first, we're going to listen to a bionic pop artist. Yes, you heard that right. Only at Dutch Digital Day you'll see a speaker lineup like this. Let me uh, say, uh, repeat some of the praise that she's received. Uh, she bridges performance art, music and fashion with technology, science and medicine. Her futuristic approach on the body as art concept got her even selected as a director's fellow at the MIT Media Lab. We're very honored that she's with us, but before she'll come on stage, we're going to play a video. Thank you so much. Thanks for the wonderful introduction and how amazing it is to be in Amsterdam. Uh, unfortunately, I have to disappoint you that we will not be seeing a live stage physical performance here. I'm just going to be talking about some things that have impacted me and that I hope will impact you. Um, so as we went over again, I'm a bionic performance artist uh, and a creative director. And I think what I really wanted to try to speak to you today about is um, the importance of imagination. And I'm going to talk about it through, um, through my own lens and my own perspective and how it impacted my life. The stories that we believe as children shape our lives and who we are today. And I really experienced uh, the impact of and the power of storytelling while I was growing up in a hospital in USSR. Um, I spent most of my childhood in a hospital. It's out there in Google, we can talk about it another time. But through that period, what I did is I really escaped the harsh reality into my imagination. And with that, Disney and Hollywood absolutely helped. And the optimistic vision that it presented really transformed the way I think right now. The Little Mermaid was definitely a favorite as I was lying in bed, uh, having multiple surgeries over and over again, not really knowing when it was going to end. I thought, actually, hang on a second. I think that there is, there is a reason to dream and imagine a better future. The Hollywood movies, which inspired me, such as The Fifth Element, which I'm sure everyone has seen, Edward Scissorhands, The Matrix, they all talked about other dimensions, the transformed, unorthodox characters into these uh, fantastical heroes. The outcasts became the leading characters in their own stories. And in these stories, the characters overcame their circumstances with extraordinary courage and creativity and believed in the future that is theirs to change. When I moved, when I moved post-Soviet uh, Latvia to London in 99, which explains my slightly British but confusing accent, um, I discovered the grown-up version of Disney. I discovered conceptual art fashion and subculture of London at the time. In particular, Matthew Barney, uh, surrealist films that really stuck in my mind. This is when I learned that when you grow up, imagination doesn't need to stop. And it became, and it can become and manifest in reality. So some of my other artistic heroes, are, hopefully some of you have seen some of these images, and maybe not. Some of my other artistic heroes are um, choreographer Marie Chenard, which did a live uh, performance at the Saddles Wells called Body Remix with ballet. Um, another one is 
some of the images of Nick Knight uh, and the altered human creations that he was making. The most enchanting of all was Alexander McQueen and his conceptual identities. All of these icons taught me that creativity allows us to approach problems from a malleable perspective, to stretch our mind and to reimagine the world that we live in. Art started to seem like a real answer to human suffering, especially when I was a teenager. These are conceptual works. It's fashion and art. It's not costumes and sci-fi, but it is a step closer to reality. It's a lot more amongst us than the movies that we see on screen. The other disciplines that, appro that, uh, that approach this level of human transformation on a more practical level is, of course, medicine. And solving physical challenges with technology puts things into more urgent perspective. And this is kind of the lens that I'm talking about, that I'm describing these things that influence me. It's about what we need versus what we want. We don't hesitate to assist or alter ourselves with technology for medical purposes. We don't question, do we need a replacement hip or uh, some sort of implant in our body if it means saving our life. But there is a big gap between practical medicine and the conceptual ideas of the human that I was really fascinated with. So I had a medical problem since birth and the doctors and the years of surgeries were not able to solve them for me. So I needed to do something really drastic. And during my teenage years, I took matters into my own hands. I took control of my body and within five years of really long negotiations, the doctors in London finally agreed to give me a voluntary amputation below my knee. It was a creative solution for a real human problem. So I transformed. I learned something amazing in the process. When I solved the basic medical problem of my ability with both um, technology and art as my focus, I changed my perception of what innovation really is. For me, it created a new understanding of the relationship between the body's natural design and function in the artificial enhancements designed by humans. I made it real practical, <laughs> and I made, it, I made myself the experiment. Since my amputation over 10 years ago, I have focused all of my energy on implementing my imagination in the real world. My body has become my canvas for my creative expression and future identity and my own experiment. Taking traditional art forms such as performance art and fashion, I'm adding science and technology to redesign myself and play with the boundaries of the human form. This raw experience made me think, how can we apply this experiment to our culture and to other industries? My intimate relationship with technology and design has taught me that innovation can be harnessed in a humanistic and creative way. But this can be implemented, but can this really be implemented on a larger scale and to other disciplines? One example is how we're using technology we have created, merging it with big data and our collective, collective consciousness, and then, of course, harnessing it for consumerism. We have been using the most advanced technology ever created to make it easier for us to buy things. It makes you wonder, makes me wonder, I hope it makes you wonder, if the people that are creating all of this technology realize that they too can be artists and that they can fundamentally change the way we live. More broadly speaking, here is some imagery that inspires me on a day-to-day -day basis. If technology and science is the closest thing to magic, is there a better use for our magic? Our human innovations have the potential to bring us together and to keep building our environment in a more creating in responsible way. We invent our own reality every day, every single one of us. To visualize ourselves in the world 
that showcases with data, we, find, we end up finding out how we feel as a society, but is it really helping to improve our lives? So my question here, showing you some of the work that I've been doing, is if we can lose the fear that innovation poses when crossing the biological boundaries, can we embrace the transformation that's upon us in a more confident way? If we welcome the artificial extension to our human identity, I believe we can gain a new confidence as a community of creators. And we need inclusivity for creativity. And for that, we need disruption of how we think about who we include. Inclusivity means much more than the corporate idea of diversity. It means real diversity in creative thinkers. We need politicians, bankers, architects, designers, and coders that do not fit the stereotypes of their professions, new archetypes, and a broader creative perspective for the next generation of the human experience. It took me over a decade to see that disobedience is the heart of this process. The lack of structure that I had while growing up, isolated from society and locked away in my imagination, gave me the freedom to see all, that all culture is a canvas. Each one of us is working with a different medium, picking up our tools, brushes, to create a new reality, potentially breaking boundaries and professional skill sets. So, I really believe that we need to engage in sophisticated anarchy today <laughs> and to improve the quality of the capitalist environment that we have right now. We need to put human values at the center of our technological experience. Innovation has the potential to bring us together, to keep building on environment in a more creative and responsible way and to rewrite the rules. But the real innovation is in changing the way we create and collaborate to start with. Across all of culture, this is the next step in evolution. Now, this next clip I'm going to show you is the latest project from Paris, where I just came back from a few days ago. It was a two-week show at a successful interdisciplinary big mission. It was a collaboration between tech and fashion designers, choreographers, fine artists, video artists, prosthetists, musicians, performers, dancers. Um, I hope you enjoy it, and it's been really great speaking with you. Let's watch this. <laughs> Victoria Modesta, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, what a story.